Hi, boys and girls. Nick DiPaolo here. Free speech lives right here on The Nick DiPaolo Show. I'm grateful to be able to do this show my way, and I'm only able to do it my way because of your generous contributions. Please go to nickdip.com or click the link on the comicsgym.com and contribute today to keep this show and our speech free. Thank you so much. Yeah, how are you folks? Welcome to the big show, final day of the week, Thursday. Good to be with you. Let's get right to it, since it's Thursday, and uh, every day the the headlines are more disgusting. Uh, Have you ever, ever seen a government that despises its own country and people like jerk off Joe Biden's administration? And again, he's just a puppeteer. I mean, I've been around long enough to remember him as sort of not quite down the middle, always a little to the left, but it's so obvious that AOC and the squad and all these other scumbags who hate this country with a passion have his ear, and he's just uh, just a puppeteer, and he slurs his words, man. This guy does not have far to go. His exit is coming up very quick, And, uh, and I'll say one more time, he's not the president. What? You fucking heard me. It's all coming out, but you idiots on the left don't know. Why am I talking to you? You're not even watching. Uh, Anyways, jerk off a Joe using military planes to move around the legals in the interior of our country. I'll repeat that. He's using U.S. military planes to help illegals invade our country, moving around the interior of the United States, not telling anybody where they're going, just dumping them. How is this not being resisted. Jesus Christ. This isn't an impeachable offense. That's not treason. Remember when Trump was speaking, when he first got into office, he was, uh, I don't know, Putin was there, and he said something that sounded like he was siding with Putin and they wanted to fucking hang him. But this is fine. I I don't get it. I don't get it. Are there any Republicans? uh, We can't depend on them. Lindsey Graham's, you know, home uh, in a fucking Afghan while this is going. Anyways, there's only one guy on it. Fox News host Tucker Carlson yesterday said a whistleblower leaked an email to him revealing the Biden administration is using the United States military to secretly move illegal aliens around the country from Laughlin Air Force Base. <laughs> How'd it go, Joe? What are we doing? You don't What's know. What's going on right now? I don't know. Ask your handlers. Ask your wife, dickhead. The U.S. military is supposed to defend this nation, but they are now secretly aiding and abetting illegal alien invaders. Uh, Here's what uh, Tucker had to say. This show has confirmed that the Biden administration has enlisted the U.S. military to move illegal immigrants secretly around our country. That is happening at Laughlin Air Force Base in Texas. We know it's happening there because a man called Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Burroughs sent his subordinates an email spelling it out very clearly. Quote, over the next few days, weeks or months, the note began, you may see passenger aircraft on our ramp transporting undocumented non-citizens. Please review the attached public <laughs> affairs guidance <laughs> on the issue. Burroughs' email then instructed uniformed military personnel to hide what was happening on the base from the country they're sworn to serve. Quote, Do not take photographs and refrain from posting anything on social media. Very transparent. Burroughs offered no national security justification for keeping any of this secret because there is no national security justification for keeping it from the rest of us. He just told the people who work for him not to talk. Now, we got his email from a whistleblower, and at first we doubted it could be real. During the last administration, you'll remember, the Pentagon firmly refused to protect America's southern border. That's not our job, they said. It's too political. Send us to Syria. 
And yet, according to this document, here was the very same U.S. military leadership at the Pentagon helping the Biden administration with maximum enforced stealth, with secrecy, to subvert this country's core immigration laws. It was hard to believe that could be happening, but it is happening. The Pentagon has confirmed it to us. Spokesman Chris Mitchell described the flights from Lachlan as non-citizen movement, part of what he called the U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement's mission. He told us then to direct any further questions to ICE. So we did. We called ICE multiple times. ICE did not deny they were using Lachlan Air Force Base to relocate (laughs) large numbers of foreign nationals into the interior of our country and do it secretly. The question is, where are all these people going? Several times I have Ohio us additional Steuben details, Bill. but in the end we never heard back. Apparently, Americans do not have a right to know where foreign nationals are being resettled in their own country. Oh my god. You fucking people. You have no idea how to defend a nation. Just go to the mall, you'll see him Friday night eyeing your fourteen year old daughter. You're going to hear a lot of this from you, the people in the apartment above you who just moved in. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Do you fuck him? I wonder if they made him wear masks on the plane. Probably They probably, uh, you know, had champagne cocktails and... Uh, are you fucking kidding me? And, you know, people go, why do you watch Fox News? It's all bullshit. Really? That can be checked out, unlike anything said on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC. These facts, can you can check them out. Is, the, and is Tucker the only one on this? I'm sure there's a few other right-wing, you know, Breitbart. Uh, but h- how about the other 40 channels of mainstream media? Just ignoring it. Are you fucking, how is that not against the law? Or the Constitution, using your military equipment to help people invade your own country. We're cutting our own throats. And if we don't, they'll do it for us in a few years. What the fuck? Oh, my God. What do you watch for? They're the only one covering anything. Where's Don Lemon getting blown under a table in the Hamptons? You bitch. Wolf Blitzer. Fucking Jake Capper with that permanent cry look on his. Yeah, but these people have a right to, you know, they're running from, um, they're running from what? They have Nikes on that are better than mine when they get here. Nice windbreakers. Windbreakers? (laughs) I thought I saw a guy with a, from members only jacket. But seriously, are you fucking kidding me? (sighs) Ah. And the left-wing media just cheering them on. No, they're ignorant. That's ignorant. Oh, yes, it is. You know, helping, uh, helping destroy your own country. Do you understand? Have you looked up uh, Rules for Radicals by Alinsky? Have you looked at Joseph Stalin's playbook and all the other, how to bring down a capitalist company, uh, co- excuse me, <laughs> company, Freudian slip, uh, country? You just overload it with people from and the poor people who can't contribute and, and they jump on welfare and all the other safety net programs till it collapses. And you're watching it before your eyes. What the fuck? Oh, but the midterms, we'll turn it around. <laughs> what the fuck? This ship is not going to be able to be turned around. Oh, and by the way, more evidence is coming out. More that I don't even have a story on. Maricopa County's paperwork doesn't match what... what the night of the elections, the numbers, well, I should say eight days after the election. They don't match up. There's all kinds of shit coming out. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Joe Biden. I got to tell you, like they said in The Godfather, <laughs> or Godfather too, I always mix the two up. Boy, Roth played this one perfectly. <laughs> Roth being Joe Biden and the Democrats, I should say. Let's put in a fucking guy who's senile and he'll just say anything. Anyways, it's it, it, fuck. the hatred for this country is beyond. I knew they disliked it, but my friggin' God. This next story will prove even more so. In our Are You Dog Styling Me segment tonight, 
uh, the United Nations, whose World Health Organization arm um, was just panned for its probe of the COVID-19 pandemic's origins, uh, confined to guidelines set by the Chinese Communist Party. You know, the WHO is just a mouthpiece for the Chinese Communist Party. They were telling them what to put out as far as health guidelines. Hey, they actually have a woman, the Chinese, in their military? Okay, all's not lost. Um, do you fucking believe it? Uh, now... I kill you. I kill you right now. Kill me. I'm right here. Kill me. Okay, okay? I come with two chopsticks. I, I shove up your ass. Uh, Shoe come over here. Talk to me in the face. Like some booty. Yeah, like some booty. That was President Xi Jinping. Uh, anyways, the WHO, World Health Organization, has been formally invited by the Biden administration, this is part of the UN, uh, to investigate the scourge of racism, racial discrimination, and xenophobia, not in China, or where it exists everywhere else. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the United States according to Secretary of State Pussy Anthony Blinken. What a cheese dick this guy is. Can you imagine? They're inviting the UN to come in and criticize how racist we are and how we can... Didn't the West... Excuse me. Didn't the West end abolish slavery? And we didn't invent it. Aren't there people, black, brown, yeah, of all colors, trying to get in here? Obviously, Joe Biden's using military equipment to move him around. So how racist is this? What a fucking the UN. That's where we start once the revolution kicks off. Burn that fucking to the ground. It'll get coverage. It's right in New York. But do you believe Biden? Yeah, let's invite the UN and tell the people, especially those Trump supporters. Ugh. You pompous, fucking motherfucker. up, snot nose, English Giant, twerp, scumbag, fuckface, dickhead, asshole. You forgot cheater. Cheater in chief. As the president has repeatedly made clear, I guess this is Blinken talking, great nations such as ours do not hide from our shortcomings. Is that what we've been doing for the last fucking hundred years? Hiding from our original sin? It's all we talk about. We've passed civil rights. We solved this problem in the 60s, you fuckheads. They should be inviting people, other countries in to look at us. To say, hey, why are people of all different colors and races pouring into this country? You, oh, you, oh, goodness gracious, Eloise. I'm going to need a goddamn Pepsi AC. Great nations uh, as ours do not hide from our shortcomings. They acknowledge them openly and strive to improve with transparency. That's all we do! What do you call affirmative action? Fucking welfare. Black Lives Matter, a Marxist group. Letting them fucking do their thing. Oh, bailing black thugs out so they can get back on the street and burn down more shit. What a racist country. Fuck you. Calm down, Nick. It's the coffee. I can't help it. I'm out of Sanka. Lincoln, in a statement, he released that on Tuesday, and he was bitch-slapped on Wednesday. Uh, no, he wasn't. It was cheer. It is in the context that the United States intends to issue a formal standing invitation to all U.N. experts who report and advise on thematic human rights issues. How about this? Shut up. Mind your fucking business and shut up. He continues, as a first step, we have reached out to offer an official visit by U.N. special uh, rapporteur on contemporary forms of racism and the UN Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues. Why do we care what they fucking Who think? Who gives a fuck what you think? Yeah. The invitation was extended a little over a year after the lightning rod death of George Floyd. Uh, I wonder if they're going to tell me what who George Floyd was and how he died. A black man killed when white Minneapolis police Derek Chauvin uh, kneeled on his neck and convicted of murder. I'm glad they cleared that up. I had no idea what they were talking about. I'm staying right here. <coughs> In a global report issued last month, sparked by Floyd's death, UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet called on nations to start dismantling racism. Who the fuck are you? Look at her. Here she explains how to fix a transmission. 
Got fucking forearms on her like Boog Powell. Nice haircut. Lick another clam. Is there a woman on the left who's really smart in a high position of power that doesn't look like John Madden? Jesus, fuck. And earlier this month, Bachelet said that nations should fully fund, get this, a wide range of reparations measures to make amends for slavery, discrimination, and colonial rule. And to that I say, Shut your fucking mouth! Shut the fuck up, you cunt! End of story. Nope, there's more. (laughs) Can you imagine? I can't wait. There's a part of me that wants to see this administration or whoever's going to run in the country in a year try to pass reparations. I, I, I want them to make an... I really do. I want to see... I think that'll be worse than when they try to take our guns away. Because, <clears throat> you see, 90% of the people had nothing to fucking do with it. I'm not going to go through it again. Hey, Tiger, your check's in the mail. Thank Christ. The invitation also... Co- oh, another sign it's a racist country. We let a rapist, Bill Cosby, oh. The invitation also comes less than a year after the United States endured a, uh, a lashing on its civil rights record before the UN. Get, who scolded us? Get, get this. This is the countries that were lecturing us last year on human rights, and I'm not making it up. China, who, what, they have how many Uyghurs in prison? Russia, run by a, a guy who every time a... Uh, somebody in the media, a journalist disagrees, he gives them a, a cup of tea and the guy's dead the next day. Saudi Arabia, who will still beat you within an inch of your life if you're caught shoplifting, if you leave the house uh, and you're a woman without a fucking uh, family male companion. You know, they should... And North Korea, who we know, they treat their people like gold. The year 11 that are left. Can you fucking believe it? So we're going to have the UN giving us shit? Yeah. Then let me look around so I can ease the UN's collective mind. Mind your fucking uh, business. My boss here, huh? You breaking my boss? <laughs> you want inspection? We inspect that, you butt fucking piece of shit. <laughs> this is a good show today, folks. Is it not? In the Tuesday statement, Blinken said that uh, the United States had a duty to stand for judgment at the hands of the outside world. Oh my God. Responsible nations must not shrink from scrutiny of their human rights record. Yeah, well, let the scrutiny come from within. I don't give a fuck what the rest of the world thinks. They're all envious of us. Matter of fact, the last time we checked, we're the only superpower left. Until people like you got in office. What a Weasley fucking self-white-hating dick. Scrutiny of their human rights record rather than they shh should acknowledge it with the intent to improve, he said. I urge all UN member states to join the United States in this effort and confront the scourge of racism, racial discrimination, and xenophobia. Do you mean around the planet or just here, dinkweed? Are you going to go to Africa with different tribes kill each other with axe handles? Or does that not pass? Or the Middle East with Sunnis and Shias have been going at it for how long? Or the fucking Jews and, and, and the fucking Arab? Ooh. Oh, oh. What a disgrace. And it's all coming from a guy who stole an election. Not even him. People who handle him. The UN is just... Remember Trump stepped in and said, hey, what the fuck? We're paying about a third of the bill here. Remember he cleaned that mess up too? And then jerk off Joe comes in with his people. And uh, I'm ready to cry. I, let's do a, let's do a, uh, I don't know, let's do it. Uh, the world's in political and social upheaval. If you watch the news every night, you're like, holy fucking moly. I think I'm going to put on Netflix and have six Tito's on the rocks and forget about it. Um, even in this country. Let's move on to the next segment. I can't do it. No, 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 no! In our FLA segment tonight, uh, and it's usually a funny story out of Florida, but this is uh, more poignant, and uh, Libertad, Libertad, what is it? Remember that in Scarface? Remember when they were in the tent under the bridge? And uh, Tony goes, sir, for a green card, I'll cut them up real nice. I'm going to carve them up real nice. (laughs) And they're all chanting, Libertad, Libertad. 
Liberty, liberty. That's what it means. Cubans calling for intervention. Florida, in Florida, Dade County and around there. Hundreds of Cubans gathered in South Florida on Tuesday. Uh, actually, Naples. I wonder if my brother get caught up in this traffic. I think he's a boss. Tuesday to protest uh, not the lack of medical supplies in Cuba, but the brutal communist regime abusing their family and friends uh, back home. You know what we're talking about. Cuban and American flags filled the streets of downtown Naples. The whole world lives there. As protesters joined others around the country and in Cuba to oppose a dictatorship that has gripped the island since 1959 when Fidel Castro took over because we failed in whacking him. It is misinformation that COVID, Chinese coronavirus, and hunger is causing the protests in Cuba. That's not the truth. People are tired of the government. They are tired of, of not being free, and that's what they are fighting for, said protest and local singer, I got all this stuff, Yanir Avarino. <laughs> uh, God bless the Cubans. Uh, let me tell you, guys his age, you know, they still have family. Oh, the younger generation was starting to get a little almost leaning Democrat, but Cubans have always been there because, number one, Florida's 90 miles away. We have a friendly government. We're bigger than U.S. Steel. Um, and, uh, yeah, they still have relatives over there, and they're always there for the Republicans. They're hardworking conservative people. Some of them do a little blow, but who does it? Anyways, here's, uh, here's some video of one of the protesters. Uh, what's that? This is this is Yanir. This is the this is the singer. Yep. Holy shit! I have all the stuff. Apparently, I uh, don't know what he looks like, but uh, here he is being interviewed uh, and giving his feelings on why America should help out. I'm here defending the Cuban people. It's under the regime of Castro and the communism, and we're fighting to support them. We need medical intervention, military intervention. We need to support the Cuban people because they are dying. Yeah. The government is killing the people. People are without firearms, without nothing. They only have the, the, their hands and their heart for the freedom. And we need support from the American government. They're firing on their own people who aren't even armed. People just disappear I over there. The good things they say about communism, it's not real. Uh -huh. this, country, this country is beautiful right. the way it is. Okay? Amen, Don't brother. Okay? We're working good. This is the best country of the world. So, God bless America. Don't if this country needed communism, we wouldn't come here. No, it's not exactly. We don't want to be here if there was communism. Sounds like somebody's been following the Biden administration. I love it. Huh? How do you like it? They tell you all the time what to do, what to think, what to feel. Do you want to be like a cheap? <laughs> like all those other people, man? <laughs> bah, bah. I don't have to Come listen on. to this bullshit. Do you want to work eight, ten fucking hours? You own nothing? <laughs> Brother. Do you want to go to war? Come on. Do you want to go to war? We'll take you to war, okay? Tony. Tony, can you? I love it. That's a good sign. It's very early in the electoral process. And thousands of people out in the street. They were blocking the highways and everywhere. Okay, they know what's going on, and they see what's coming here. That's why they're out there. And they want the United States to do some military, but we can't. We're too busy bringing Guatemalans from Texas into Kentucky. The planes are all taken up. Wow, what a time to be alive. This is a great show, isn't it, today? I think it is. <laughs> I'll tell you. This what all about, huh? You got a bag for a stomach? I hear that every time I look at the mirror. I don't know what's going on. I'm bloating like a fucking woman. Um, anyways, thousands of Cubans took to the streets in at least 20 provinces in Cuba on Sunday to peacefully demand the end of communism. The waves of discontent were captured on social media, which helped Cubans communicate across the, uh, the country and band together for the island's largest demonstration in decades. Though protests have continued, hundreds of people are likely missing. And that's what happens, see? And they still come out. How come 100 people aren't missing after the looting and burning and rioting in this country? Wouldn't you like to hear that? Sometimes the communists do it right. I'm just saying. I'm talking about people caught on camera burning and looting. These people get shot at just with their hands up, like the guy said. 
So likely uh, people are missing. Police have reportedly peppered the crowd with bullets. Doesn't say rubber bullets. Doesn't say peppers. With bullets to subdue uh, the, uh, the opposition. That'll shut you up. I think I'll go to lunch. President Miguel diaz Canel, the figurehead of the Castro regime, responded to the protest by urging, listen to this, revolutionary, God, he's young, huh? Revolutionaries to violently assault unarmed, unarmed protesters on the streets, describing his call as an order of combat, is what is how uh, he put it, of course. He's pretty young. They're usually old. You're a real crumb bum. So that's what he tells him. Fucking, uh, you know, whack him. I don't care. Unarmed. In response to Diaz Canal's order, both uniformed and plainclothes police officers have unleashed a wave of repression on protesters uh, that has included shooting at them, attacking them with dogs, and public beatings. Some of those I approve of against Antifa and BLM members, so I don't want to be a hypocrite here. But this jerk-off's doing it against peaceful, truly peaceful protesters. Not the peaceful protesters you see on CNN when there's a Wendy in flame, a Wendy's in flames like three feet away. The regime also appeared to shut down internet access to stem the flow of citizen journalist videos depicting extreme... Rep- well, they're censoring social media. Where have you heard that before? Congratulations, Zuckerberg. You, you step in step with a communist uh, dictator of Cuba, you motherless fuck. Yes, I do. We all do, Ortega said at the Naples protest when Breitbart News asked if he still has a family in Cuba. Uh, this is the only Ortega we could find. We're guessing it's him. <laughs> yeah, soccer player, I'm hoping. Looks a little Asian, I don't know. Uh, said they came to the United States when he was 18 years old looking for freedom, and he found Jerkoff. President Joe Biden, listen, avoided explicitly condemning communism. Can you imagine? It doesn't even speak out on Biden it. Biden. And Marxist ideology in a Monday statement, uh, though he claimed to stand with the Cuban people. But he can only stand for a few minutes, and he gets very tired. Marxism is the philosophical underpinning of communism, the ruling political system in Cuba, and uh, has resulted in the deaths of at least 100 million people over several decades. White House press secretary and my girlfriend, Secretary Jen, I might be a man, Saki, said Monday that Cuban protesters yelling freedom, listen to this, the balls on her, during an anti-communist protest could have actually been demanding freedom from rising COVID case. Who told her to say that? Oh my God. You stupid fucking blah 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 cut. She's got to be embarrassed. On Wednesday, Saki again declined to blame unrest in Cuba on communism. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's what it is. <sighs> so you got people down there, Cubans, who have relatives still over there, and they see what's happening here, which is a good sign. And I'm going to report on a, a, an election that went on in Georgia, a special election where the conservatives smoked the other guy. But I'll say it one more time. All this is a moot point if we're using Dominion machinery again in the, in the midterms. <laughs> Do you see how hard they're pushing? Biden's pushing, saying that Trump's full of shit, the big lie. Do you understand how hard they're pushing? Because they know if they... If, if, if they put that fucking uh, argument down, they'll never never lose another election. It's all about power. We've been through it. Uh, the losers uh, lose. I should say the loser, singular, loses again. Oh, it's the aforementioned Stacey Abrams. <clears throat> Apparently one of her, uh, one of her uh, protégés lost badly in Georgia. Stacey Abrams and her organization Fair Fight. <laughs> Look at the pipes on her. <laughs> Fair fight. We're handed a big loss on Tuesday. <laughs> of course. You know why? You're a loser. You'll always be a loser. Oh, forget it. You fat, nasty, black bitch. Georgia Republicans got a big win over Democrats in a special election for a state house seat last night. Republican Devin Seba defeated Democrat Priscilla Smith 
in the election for House District uh, 34. That's otherwise known as HD 34. Uh, has Stacey Abrams, uh, has she um, admitted that they lost, or is she going to do what she did when she lost the mayoral race and whatever it was? Republicans were able to expand their margin of victory in the district from 4% to 26%. That's actually good news, everybody. Hey, everybody, we're all going to get laid. Uh, here's a picture tweet uh, from at Greater Georgia. The tweet reads, oh, it's a thing. Well, we could have pulled this out of USA Today. They love their pie charts and bar graphs. and <laughs> As you can see, the red there, as of uh, back in November 2020, uh, I just said to you, they've increased it from what, 4% to 26 or whatever the hell, uh, or a huge win for conservative values last night. R plus 7 swing from 2020. Turnout plus 1,811 votes from the June 2021 general election. Cobb County voters soundly rejected the left's radical agenda and instead chose positive pro-growth policy. It, all this is a good sign. Between that and the Cubans upset, do you understand? Like we've been saying here, the Biden administration's going too fast with all this radical horseshit. But, you know, midterms are coming up. That's how it works. you got to jam that shit when you can. But apparently, some people are watching Fox News. That's good news for Georgia. And don't ever believe the state is fucking blue or even purple, like my shirt. I still see kids with uh, gun racks on their strollers and women chewing tobacco at Walmart. Trust me. It's all good. It's a Chick-fil-A every three feet. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Another great product. Do you guys ever read the fine print that appears when you stop browsing incognito mode? It says that your activity might still be visible to your employer, your school, or your internet service provider. How can they even call it incognito? To really stop people from seeing the sites you visit, right? You don't want your parents seeing what you're doing. You need to do what I do. Use ExpressVPN. This is a great product. Think about all the times you've used Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, at a hotel. Without ExpressVPN, every site you visit could be logged by the administration of that network. And that's still true even when you're incognito. Do you believe that? I mean, do you really want your parents to see what you've been looking at? I know I don't. What's more, your home internet provider, I'm talking Comcast, AT&T, whatever, can also see and record your browsing data. And in the United States, they're legally allowed to sell that data to advertisers. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all of your network data and reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays just that, private. ExpressVPN works on all your devices, and it's super easy to use. I figured it out. The app literally has one button. You tap it to connect, and your browser activity is secure from prying eyes. So stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash nickdip. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash nickdip to get three, that's right, three extra months for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Nick Dip to learn more. It's a great product. And we roll on. Let's lighten it up. You know my idea of light story. People falling off buildings, fires at a nursing home. That type of stuff we can laugh at. This one, well, the headline is, Don't pee in my pool. One man's day at the beach, this was in Brazil, I think, turned deadly after he was killed by a shark while wading into the surf to relieve himself. Jesus, I'll never do that again. Oh, quanta tarita, my Dios. I was trying to stop it. Guy had a lot of beer. Anyways, there was a lot of blood in the water, bystander Andriano Gomez told Newsflash of the horrific attack, which occurred Saturday at uh, Pide Beach in Haboto dos Guararepes, northeastern Brazil. 
The victim, Marcelo Rocha Santos, 51, had reportedly been drinking with friends when nature called. And like we all do, fellas, he and a fellow uh, reveler decided to head into the sea to urinate around 2 p.m. when the surf had turned tumultuously and murky, making it difficult to spot anything in the water. Despite signs um, warning people to stay out of the ocean, the lifeguard on duty refrained from ordering the two men back to the beach as they were only in up to their waist. So the guy, you know, left them alone. Santos stunned pal Adamea Sebastiano de Silva recalled, as the beach has no bathroom, I went into the sea to pee. I was beside him in the water. That's when the shark struck, biting off the unfortunate beachgoer's hand, his right hand, and taking off uh, a chunk of his leg. Ugh, yeah, yeah. Is it because we're black? No, they eat everybody. Um, check this out. His his uh, somebody took footage with a phone. It, it's a little graphic, but uh, uh, the red things that you see uh, on the back of us that's not a swim try. Those are chunks of flesh that have, the shark took. Check it out. Looks like the rock. <laughs> Look at his right hand missing. Watch. Oh my God. Can you imagine? That's how you go. Santos was immediately rushed to a hospital in Recife where he was pronounced dead. Meanwhile, his buddy De Silva, who was the only other person in the water at the time, escaped the incident unscathed. He said, it could be me. It was God's deliverance. I never understood that. People who believe in God. Well, it's God delivered the shark, too. Depending on how you look at it. I don't know. It, it could be me. It was God's deliverance. He said, if I had been diving or lingered in the water, I could have been attacked. It's unknown what kind of shark bit Santos. Does it really matter? How about an angry one? Bit Santos and, and a hungry one. It is thought to be uh, either a bull shark or a tiger shark. However, the incident took place near an area, get this, where there had been 12 prior attacks. Shark attacks are reportedly common during this time of year as the uh, heavy rains make the ocean all uh, cloudy. And yet they still went back? To that area? No. Proves that you wealthy college boys don't have the education enough to admit when you're wrong. Experts attribute the region's surge in shark attacks, of which there have been 62 incidents with 25 fatalities in the last 30 years. With the construction of the new Swap A port in 1992, which reportedly disrupted the predator's breeding and feeding patterns. So don't don't go in the water. I, what are you even doing at that beach? Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we received orders to sail back to Boston. And so no more shall we see you again. <laughs> Robert Shaw, I'd blow that guy. Not today, he's dead. Ay, 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 You know how I always say I don't believe some of these politicians? The ones that hate white people and then the, the uh, I always bring up the Cory Bushes of the world and that hateful bitch, Ayanna Presley up in Massachusetts and um, Elon Omar. I, I don't believe any of them are elected. I, I really don't. I, I know why uh, people are stupid, but I don't think they're that stupid, especially in really white states. I can't believe who's getting elected. It's such proof that somebody's agenda is to wreck this country as we know it. Because now the lowest of the low are holding office. Some of them are freaking illiterate. Like this guy. This guy sounds like a street thug to me. Driving while racist. That's what I said. He's claiming he stopped because he was black. Newly released police body cam footage raises serious doubts about a Minnesota lawmaker's claim that he was pulled over and ticketed by cops for driving, well, black. How many times are you going to fucking 
hear that. Don't give me that smart alecky shit. Bunch of crap. And cops now want an apology. You're damn right. The video released by St. Paul Police. Jesus, it's always Minnesota, huh? Having problems? Shows State Rep John Thompson after he was pulled over around 1.20 a.m. on the 4th of July. Why in such a hurry, the cop asked Thompson. Of course, Thompson said... Uh, That's a sick question. You're a sick fuck, and I'm not that sick that I'm going to answer. Oh, just go along with the cop. I don't think I took off like a bat out of hell. He said, well, the cop never said you did. Thompson responds on the video, which was published by... Uh, uh, bringmethenews.com. I just drove off, the lawmaker said. I'm a state rep in the in this district right now. And then a cop with a Wisconsin license, the, the officer asked him. So let, let's take a look at the footage before I tell you any more. Here's the clip. Sorry, sorry I took a little long, but so there's your license to my card. You're suspended in Minnesota? No. That's what the computer says. If it's wrong, you have to deal with the Thank DBS. You. Thank you. So what did you pull me over again? Uh, no front plate, Thank and then the way you Thank took you. off from man, the light back there. I'm too old to run from the police, man. You profiled me because you looked me dead in the face, and I got a ticket for driving while black. You mm -hmm. pulled me over because you saw a black face in this car, brother, and you. And I, there was no way in hell I'm taking off with you behind me. You looked at me in this car, you looked in this car and busted you turn and got behind my car. On, and that's the reason why you... I know, I know. But what, what I'm saying is what you're doing is wrong to black men. And you need to stop that. Thank you so much. But this ticket means nothing to me. No, no, no. no. I'm going to always have a great day. What I'm saying is you will stop racially profiling black men in their cars, sir. Stop doing that. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Yes, you were, boy. You, you saw a black man driving in this car. I, it don't make no difference. You pull me over because you're profiling me. Thank you. So much. Oh, God. These blacks. Who knows where they're going to take the wrong way? There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. The guy had no front plate. Driving well. How about paranoid and uh, anti-white? Did that guy sound like he should be in an office anywhere? How do you get elected being that fucking biased to the people who voted for him? And there's not that many black people in Minnesota. Maybe in the city, I don't know. Um, are, are you, do you not know that he, every picture of him, he has a Black Lives Matter t-shirt on, given the black power sign. I, and you want me to believe people um, don't look at his record before they vote? I, I'm not fucking buying it. I don't know who's in charge. St. Paul Police Chief Todd Axtell Feels the same way. That looks like a clip from every film in L.A. A white sheriff and a black detective looking on. St. Paul Police Chief Todd Axtell later fired back at Thompson's claims. KSTP-TV said, Simply put, the traffic stop was by the book, Axtell told the station on Friday. What happened afterward was anything but. I'm dismayed and disappointed by the state representative's response to the stop. Rather than taking responsibility for his own decisions and actions, he was probably drunk. Did he, he didn't test him for that. He attempted to deflect, cast aspersions, and deny any wrongdoing, the chief said. You are correct, sir. Yeah, he's a black racist. This is who's this is who's in charge now. That's what's creepy. That's a politician from Minneapolis. You guys have great taste. That's why I know. I've been to Minneapolis many, many times. And they're good people and hearty. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not buying it. They were electing these out. Although they did pick Al Franken. So. Thompson did not respond to numerous requests for comment. You know why? Because he knows he's full of shit. The outlet said Thompson has never had a Minnesota driver's license. Let's get more about this guy. And said his driving privileges were suspended in 2019. You know why? Due to unpaid child support. Just a good guy all around. Hates Whitey. He's a bad dad. There you go. You're going to tell me people voted for him, black or white? I'm not buying it. He's appointed by the Illuminati, Freemasons. Pick a group. I don't give a fuck. Whoever's running the world. George Soros, actually. Guaranteed poured a ton of money in. 
probably uh, probably has a job that you don't even elect. He's just a point. I don't even know. I'm just furious right now. <sighs> want to make some money, folks? Huh? Do you want to make some fucking money? Okay. Do you want to be very resourceful? Check this out. I'll tell you these Asians. As Jonathan Katz, a great comedian, you know, Dr. Katz once said, you know, uh, you can lead a, you know the saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Now you can make him drink. Those crazy Japanese. <laughs> Here's the headline, shitload of money. Using a toilet can pay for your coffee or buy you bananas at a university in South Korea <clears throat> uh, where human waste is being used to help power a building. <laughs> oh, boy. Can anybody say air freshener? Cho Jai Wan, an urban and environmental engineering professor at the Ulsa National Institute of Science and Technology, that's known as UNIST, has, design, has designed an eco-friendly toilet connected to a laboratory that uses excrement to produce uh, biogas and manure. I don't know. Do we need that much power? Come on, right? Is that what you want to hear before you buy a cup of coffee? The uh, BV toilet, a uh, portmanteau of the words B and vision, uses a vacuum pump to send feces into an underground tank where Joe Biden resides, reducing water use. Their microorganisms break down the waste to methane, which becomes a source of energy, sort of like cow farts, for the building, powering a gas stove. I'm not eating on it. Hot water. <laughs> Who's making egg salad? Nothing. I'm, I just turned the stove on. Hot water boiler and uh, solid oxide fuel cell. All that sounds important. Delicious. Delicious. Thank you. No, it doesn't sound delicious. If we think out of the box, feces has a uh, precious value to make energy and manure. I have put this value into ecological circulation, Cho said. An average person defecates about 500 grams a day. I'm up to about 2,500 grams a day. I don't know what's going on. I think I have cancer. I'd say 1,500 of those grams of blood. Now listen, you can't measure blood with grams. Okay, liters. An average person defecates about 500 grams a day is that true? Sounds like a lot. You shit kicking, stinky horseman horse smelling motherfucker, you. Which can be converted to 50 liters of methane gas, the environmental engineer said. This gas can generate 0.5 kilowatts of electricity or be used to drive a car for about 0.75 miles. So, <laughs> you better load up at Wendy's on the chili if you're going on vacation. Next state over. Uh, holy moly. Uh, Cho has devised a virtual currency called Jigul, like Gabagool. Oh, bring it up, Gabagool, which means honey in Korean. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. As, uh, as Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name. You can't fucking, come on. You think you're going to kid us with this honey fucking uh, reference? It's popo. Each person using the eco-friendly toilet earns 10 jigul a day. Students can use the currency to buy goods on campus, from freshly brewed coffee to instant cup noodles, fruits, and books. The students can pick up the products that they want at a shop and scan a QR code to pay for a gabagool. <laughs> jigul. But seriously, you know what? God bless the guy. It, it shows it can be done, and I do believe, I'm not an environmentalist wacko, but I do believe, you know, eventually electric cars, all. I'm, I'm not against any of that shit, you know? But don't tell me the Earth's going to end in fucking eight years because I'm on an SUV. He said, I had only ever thought the feces are dirty, but now I have it for breakfast and dinner, and I'm getting shredded. No. He says, I always thought feces were dirty, but now it is a treasure of great value to me. Postgraduate student, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't even him. It was postgraduate student, Hai Hoon Hin, said that at the Jigul market. I even talk about feces during mealtimes <laughs> to think about buying any book I want. Yeah, don't do that. Just don't, don't. Bon appetit. You know, if you take two more dumps, Marianne, I can get that, uh, that Rand McNally, uh, 
He's talking about books. He's going to buy with shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyways, good to see the guys giving back. All I do is take. But apparently I take, now I can leave it, and they can do something with it. I want to thank you people who uh, contribute to the show financially. It's what makes the show exist. It's that simple. I want to thank one-time contributors before I uh, move on. Paul Sagnella is always there for us in Connecticut. Bo Cocky, get it? Washington. Uh, Jovan Vitaliano of Florida. Then you got Ryan Hogg, New Jersey. Uh, Cunt Lapper, Illinois. And John Call of Wisconsin. Sean Powell, our buddy in Florida. Uh, new monthly supporters. I wish we could get more. Alex, Ken, Tarzan of the Grapes, Joe Bilenzenko, Canada, Zach Marino of Virginia, Anthony Foltz, Oklahoma, Steve M. from New Jersey. I want to thank you guys, both the uh, daily contributions and the monthly subscribers. Uh, we can't do it without you. Please tell your friends about this show. It really is funnier than any of the shit out there. You don't want to hear me interviewing authors and shit, do you? I mean, I can do that, but... Let's move on. Let's move on. Brainwashing kids with their favorite pop stars. This is the evil Disney at work and the government working hand in hand. Pop star Olivia Rodrigo uh, says in the address, I am honored to speak to the message of youth vaccination. Now, she's like a, a pop, she's a singer, I guess, too, right? Uh, Disney star. She's 18 years old, and I'm not going to pick on her because she's just doing what her agents are telling her to do. Um, but you can see the evilness, and this is the way you indoctrinate the little kids and scare them about uh, COVID-19. If it's coming from one of their favorite TV personalities, they're going to, you know what I mean? Eh. Like Bobby Orr, if he was selling diarrhea, I would buy it when I was a kid. It's the same thing. Get their favorite fucking personality TV or movie, and that, that's how endorsements work and stuff. She's only 18, so I don't blame her. And it's a big deal to go to the fucking White House. I'm just saying it's evil on the administration's part. Um, 18 or 9. She's 18. And, um, yeah, so she uh, did this thing uh, talking about COVID to scare kids. Yeah. I am beyond honored and humbled to be here today to have a, a message pop. about the importance of youth vaccination. Uh, I'm in awe of the work President Biden and Dr. Fauci have done and was happy to help lend my support to this important initiative. It's important to have conversations with friends and family members, encouraging all communities to get vaccinated and actually get to a vaccination site, which you can do more easily than ever before, given how many sites we have and how easy it is to find them at vaccines.gov. Thank you, Jen, for having me today, uh, and thank you all for helping share this important message. It's so appreciated. Thank you. Did you thank Trump? Why are we listening to an 18-year-old? I tell you, no fucking kiss. No, but you wouldn't listen. I am here. I have things to say. <laughs> Good for you. Again, I'm not picking on her. She's got a career. Good for her. I tried to get a career with Disney. I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to... Uh, being one of those movies that let love bug, one of those, you know, I just, they said, uh, we saw you in the roast. You can't come near our company. <clears throat> Let's go on to my, uh, another hot girl. I think this girl is smoking. You know who Jen Psaki is? <laughs> you know, the female Conan O'Brien. She's actually nice. Can I say this about Jen Psaki? She's got a tough job lying through her teeth for this regime she's working for. So she's complicit. I'm not letting her off the hook. But you know what? She does, she has a nice personality. She, she uh, lies very well. Probably learned that lying to boys or girls. Jen Psaki explains why Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo, um, why they chose her to uh, give that message. Go ahead, Jenny. Certainly a voice of someone like Olivia Rodrigo, who is uh, a popular uh, recording artist um, and someone who has wow. legions of fans. Some of them are outside the White House. Uh, and her willingness to play a role in making sure people understand, young people understand, they are not immune from getting COVID. Yes, they are! They are! Immune from getting very sick from COVID. Uh, and that it's important to uh, know that the vaccine Liar. is safe, it's effective, and it's accessible. And certainly her uh, willingness 
willingness to use her voice and her platform to speak directly to young people is quite powerful, and we're grateful for his for her time and effort. Go ahead. All right. Makes it sound like that she volunteered like they didn't come to her. Saki, you liar. You get that little red beaver right up there in front of you. I don't think it's crazy at all. <laughs> Your mom goes to college. <laughs> I love the show today. I think it's all coming together beautifully. Um, good for her, I'm saying, but come on. Don't act like she called and said, hey, I want to speak. They said, who can we get? And it's total horseshit. She doesn't know what she's saying. Kids, do you know what the survival rate is? First of all, if you're under 70, it's 99.96. And they say kids are less apt to get it. The CDC's telling, saying school kids don't have to wear masks. But the liberal jerk-offs like Bill de Blasio are ignoring that. So it's silly for them to get vaccinated. They don't even pretend to, to, to voice the other side, you know, of how the, the dangers are. Oh, it just makes me sick. Let's go on to another uh, another person who's kind of famous, I get. I didn't know who she was until I yanked it to her. What? Who said? Viral hate stuck in Shaw's craw headline. Former Nickelodeon actress Lindsay Shaw has tearfully announced <laughs> a break from social media after being flooded with hate messages for mocking a viral dance craze started by young Black men, so she should be taken out and hung because she's apparently racist. Give me a mm, break. The tears are so yummy and sweet. Oh, the tears of unfathomable sadness. Mm, yummy, yummy, you guys. This story is unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. It's very believable, but I'm just saying. The one time Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide star, what a shitty title for a show, insisted she was just poking fun at the difference between millennials and Gen Z when she first referenced the dance video that has uh, been viewed over a hundred million times. A hundred million times, black kids did. Another, an more evidence how racist this world is. So she says, hey, are we okay with that? What the fuck is this? The 32-year-old actress said in her initial TikTok, mimicking the slowed down dance uh, alongside the caption, millennials win. Um, here's, here's what she was, she, that's all she said about it. She didn't, it, it, you would think she killed a black dancer. What? Well, this is actually funny. What she's got. So it's very quick. Hello. I was doing this last night to work my lats and my wife beat her. Wow. So apparently she said, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, she, like she dropped the end bomb. Uh, it's, I, I can't even. Twitter is a cancer. Jack Dorsey has to be eliminated. Somebody get him when he's in his hydraulic chamber. Uh, anyway, so she made a comment and got a ton of hate. She was soon back online in floods of tears saying in a video, the hate mail in my inbox is not okay. I did not mean anything in any kind of way, she insisted. Um, here she is. Okay. I just have to say right now. It's a grown woman. My inbox is not okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean anything in any kind of way. I am learning every day, oh. as I think everybody is. And this kind of hate just needs to evaporate from the planet, no matter who it's directed towards. I agree. Crocodile tears. <laughs> no, dude. Like, this is like my soul out there. If you know anything about what I believe or what I believe in, you know that it's not this. She hates black people. I am sorry you were offended. I think we all need to vibrate higher for the future. Vibrate higher for and the future. I know future. I'm going to keep learning. Now she's talking I dirty. I think, like, for my own mental health. Oh, my God. <laughs> I needed to take a step back from social media. I kind of... Yeah, you're a grown woman. felt like that anyway, but it's like... Get a husband. Make a sandwich. I'm not here to offend or belittle I anybody. That's what it's for. At all. I thought that the millennial and Gen Z thing was a thing on TikTok. I, I, the intention wasn't that serious, y'all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got to just go off of here for a little while. But okay, I appreciate I you. I love right. you. And I'll be 
Yeah, I love you too. Well, who gives a fuck what you think? Why? Why like a bitch? <laughs> you gotta grow up. You're not a kid anymore. You hear me? You, you, you gotta grow up. <laughs> She's a grown woman. You notice you don't see what, what they sent her, though, right? You don't see the hate. And... That's enough for this week. I'm going to go home and hang myself. Anyways, you guys, uh, I want to thank you for another great week. I'm, I'm tired, though. I need a break. I don't know if I'm going to take that or not. Don't get, but I do. I'm getting a little burnt here. Maybe it has something to do with the Sawzall going off at 6 in the morning. <laughs> I went to bed. You know what time I went to bed last night? 3.30. I know. And, and you know what I was doing? At 1 o'clock, I said, you know what? I'm going to get in bed at a decent hour. And then I went on YouTube. I'm telling her. She's a child. I go on YouTube, and I'm watching. I love this, too. It makes me feel good about the world racially. I'm, not, I'm serious. I was watching black people's reaction, you know, when they hear songs for the first time. You ever watch those? I love that. I think it's fucking... Uh, it was the Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody. Those guys have more soulful voice. And, and, and black women actually in shock and like wiping tears from their eyes, listening to these white guys sing. And black couples who have never heard uh, Black Betty, the song, you know, Ram Jam, just freaking out. That ain't his voice. No way, motherfucker. And, and just freaking out and loving it. And it, I think it is so great. Now I'm sounding like a kumbaya guy. But it really is. Um, to watch, it, it's also it made me sad. It's like, that's how divided we are. That, you know what I mean? They're in their camp. They listen to their whatever. And, uh, but it was good. Like, oh, another one was, uh, you know what? Wild Cherry. Play that funky music, white boy. That's as black as funk as you could. I, I remember going into a shock when I found out it was a white band. And, but they had two black saxophones. It was great. It's the black and white people working together and, and black people just freaking out how good and how much they liked it. And there was a, a couple with the Bee Gees, uh, this black... This, bon appetit. What? Mind your business. She's dead, isn't she? <laughs> Anyways, I, I sat there for two hours from one till like 3.15, 3.30 watching these things. I was getting joy out of seeing black and white people agree on something. All right, that's what music will do. Fuck that. Comedy will bring us together. If they let us say anything, honestly. That is it. Thanks for another great week. Uh, don't forget uh, thecomicsgym.com. Don't forget cameo.com. If you want me to roast 20 of your friends or relatives, go to cameo.com and uh, click on the thing and tell me about the person. I'll make a video on my phone. We'll send it right to them. Uh, nickdip.com, thecomicsgym.com, cameo.com. Uh, click the tour things. I'm, I'm going to be somewhere in the middle of August, I guess. Uh, that is it for the week. Uh, you guys think that I will say it? You're very welcome. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Take care. <laughs>